Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. We are going to paint and sketch an eyeball, and we're going to start with a basic drawing. I'm using just a regular old pencil. You can use whatever, um, whatever you want. I would recommend a pencil over a watercolor pencil just so that you, um, you can see your lines as we go on to paint. But I am going to sketch fairly, um, fairly lightly. I'm going to start well, you know what? I'm going to sketch darker than I normally would because I want you to be able to see it really well. So don't sketch as dark as I am, but I just have to make sure you can see it. So I'm starting with kind of a um, rounded line. This is the top um, kind of lash line of the eye. And then I'm gonna, just going to kind of curve it around and make a not quite as rounded line on the bottom. But notice it curves up a little bit more on the end, okay? Now um, we're going to have a little rim there, so I'm just kind of doubling that line up. And oops, let's thicken it up a little bit over there. And now we are going to put the circle in for the iris. But we're not going to see, if you put a, just a regular circle in the middle, this person's going to look so surprised. Okay, when you have a big circle inside of like the whites of the eye, it looks like a shocked surprise face. So we want this to be more of a, a relaxed eye, so we're just going to have kind of like a relaxed circle there. Now over the eye, we're going to have a crease. Okay, so we've got a kind of a little line starting there. It's kind of tracing our eyeball shape, but it's a little more angular. And then up here, we're going to have an eyebrow, but I am just very, very lightly going to sketch that in because we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to show you some shading techniques. We're also going to do some color mixing and the colors that I'm using today, and I'll just show you my swatch just so I can point them out to you. We're going to use cerulean blue. We're going to use permanent alizarin crimson. If you don't have that, you can use permanent rose, any sort of cool based red. We're going to use Prussian blue. We're going to use yellow ochre. And we're going to use burnt sienna and we're going to be able to get a variety of skin tones this way you don't have to use those colors you can get to the same point that we're going to get to using other colors but um but those are those are nice and easy to work with because they're not super strong the crimson and the prussian blue are strong but the other colors really aren't so it's um it's a little bit easier i also want to just get this little um membrane in here and the edge of the whites of the eyes just so it, you can kind of see where we're going to put our colors in but that's really all we need for the sketch i'm just going to tip it away from the light a little bit so you can see it for a second a little bit clearer without the glare i that, that's a trouble with having enough lights to have a nice crisp broadcast it kind of going to bounce off the paper so see if i shade it a little bit you probably see it better so let's mix up our colors together i know this is a much asked question like how to get those colors um so i'm going to start with yellow ochre um you could probably use like a raw sienna or golden ochre anything you have that's fairly close so this is what my color looks like on its own the next color i add to it is some burnt sienna and i like to kind of paint it onto the side and then I can just mix together the proportions that I need. Now you probably notice, boy, that's awfully orange. So to temper that, what I do is I go into my cerulean. And I'm going to add that in and see how it makes it a little bit more shady. But sometimes that blue is going to make it want to go a little green. So I'm going to grab a little crimson. Uh, permanent alizarin crimson or permanent rose or whatever um, cool red you have. Now... The thing is, when you're looking at a face, you are going to see all these different colors. You're going to see shadows that are more green or blue. You're going to see highlights that are more yellow. You're going to see all these different colors. So we don't we don't just mix it into one pot and call it a day. We actually have to keep these colors. We have to adjust these colors as we go. So I'm going to go with my kind of uh, mixture of, of all four of these colors, and it's going to give me a fairly neutral um kind of skin tone and this is a, a Caucasian skin tone and we're gonna go in we're gonna just gonna kind of paint that in I can see I've got it a little bit darker than I want so I'm gonna go ahead and just paint it in my darker areas I'm not gonna worry about eyelashes right now I'm just gonna get this in the darker areas and I'm gonna paint it under the eyebrow too now to lighten this up I want to add a little water to it because I like the tone that I have here but it's just a little too dark so I'm going to add a little bit of water right into my mix, fresh water here. And then I'm going to add that right in there, right next to that wet paint. And you could do this in a sketchbook, um, wherever you want. I mean, it's not like you're going to frame a solitary picture of an eyeball generally. So, I mean, I'm using cheap paper. 
I'm just, you know, just practice, you know, this is 90 pound aqua bee paper, very inexpensive. And I think I'll also get a little bit more of the uh, crimson there and get this lash line. Let that blend out. Now, any place I look and I, I'm thinking I want a warmer shadow, I'm going to go right in with that crimson and add that in there. We're going to be doing some glazing, so we don't have to get it right on the first go. Now, the whites of the eyes aren't really white. The whites of the eyes can have a lot of different colors in them. So um, I'm going to grab a little of the cerulean on its own, a little of the burnt sienna. Very, very watery. See how we're going so, so light? One kind of like a grayish color. So we get kind of like this, this cool gray here. I'm going to add a little bit of that in here, right on the whites of the eyes. I'm going to clean my brush off, and I'm going to pull it down. can add a little bit of uh, the burnt sienna to that if that's a little too purple. And if you have any puddles, soak them up with your brush so that you don't end up with um, so you don't end up with with blooms on the face. And let me just see. I'm going to dry this. I'm going to take a quick peek at the chat while I'm drying it to see if any questions have popped up right now. But keep in mind, I will take questions at the end of the demo. And I'll tip this a little bit just so you can, I think it's a little easier to see if I tip it. You don't have quite so much reflection. It's very light still, so I'm going to dry the back of it too to make it flatten out. Okay, now we're going to work on the iris a little bit. And again, we're working in glazes. Getting a lot of glare there, I apologize. And I am going to use, I'm going to start with um, some cerulean blue because we want to keep using those same colors. Some of that in there. I'm going to grab some yellow ochre. I'm, I'm painting on the dry, uh, the dry eyeball. I'm not, at, I'm not pre-wetting it because it's such a small space, and I want some of these colors to kind of have their own identity, little flecks in them. Get that lighter bit around the iris. I mean, around the pupil. And I am going to grab some Prussian blue. Now, of course, if you wanted to do an eyeball that was a different color, you'd, you'd use different colors. Prussian blue is really nice because it's a great color to mix uh, blacks with. It's going to give us that extra shadow colors that we need for like our eyelashes and what have you. Okay, and we're going to let that dry. And while that's drying, we can go ahead and work on uh, mixing a color for the eyebrows. So first thing we want to do is add a little bit of a base shadow there. So I'm going to grab um, a little more of that cerulean blue and kind of mix that in with that skin color that we had made. That's going to darken it and cool it down a little bit. And I'm going to go in and just kind of paint not the hairs, but more just like kind of like paint the eyebrow in kind of where I want it to be. That's going to be, it's going to dry a little bit lighter. That's just going to kind of give me a little bit of shadow, like the, the hairs and the eyebrow. And we're still using a number eight round. I'm, I haven't gone to anything small yet. I just kind of tip that away from the glare so you can see. And I'm also going to put a, uh, a shadow on the lid under the crease. And I think I'll do a little bit under the eye there. Very, very light watery washes. If you get too much, just wipe your brush off and just go blend it.
switching over to a smaller brush pretty soon here, just, uh, just so you know. And now we're going to make some darker uh, color for the eyelashes and eyebrow and stuff so we can mix that while you're, we're waiting for our iris to dry. So for that, we're going to go with our Prussian blue because that's our darkest color. We're going to go with our crimson because that's also one of our darkest colors. We're going to add some burnt sienna into that because it has a yellow undertone to it. But it's still, it's darker and it's more transparent than the yellow ochre, so it's not going to give us um, a muddy look. And now we're adding a little bit more of the of the Prussian blue, because the key with the um, with mixing dark darks is to keep them transparent. When you get an opaque pigment in there, it's um, it it makes it much less transparent. Okay, so now with a smaller brush, what we're going to do is um, we are going to do a little bit of detailing. I'm blotting my brush off. I don't want too much on there. I'm going to go in and give this uh, inside of the rim of the eye a little definition. And I'm going to, let's see, our eyebrow, our eyebrows dry, so I'm going to turn my eye so that I can uh, comfortably reach it. I might want a little bit more burnt sien in that mix just because that's a little dark. But there's subtle little adjustments is all you need. Watch out for any beads of water on your brush. You want to pull those off. And you're doing the individual hairs. Hold your brush at a 90 degree. My hand's in the way if I do that, so I'm going to hold it at the, at the at an angle. But while you're doing it, you want your brush at a 90 degree angle with your paper. And you're just barely going to um, going to f touch the paper with your brush. I can't... If I do it at the right angle, I'm just I'm in your way. I apologize for that. But you just want to do little, just little hairs. And we'll let that dry and we'll come back and add some more in a little bit. I'm going to uh, darken the crease here. Again, you're right up on the tip of that brush when you are, um, when you want a really fine line. Because this isn't a tiny brush, this isn't number two. It's fairly small, but it's not like as teeny tiny as a lot of different, um, a lot of different like spotter brushes or super fine brushes that you would have. It's, it's much larger than that. Okay, so now I think I'm going to go ahead and paint in the pupil of the eye. And again, we're going to use that Prussian blue is going to be the most prominent color because it's the darkest. I need a little more crimson. I'm just mixing. I know I'm going to need more of it, so I'm just going ahead and mixing more. And I can go ahead and put it right in the pupil area. Try to keep your try to keep it as circular as you can. We will be lifting out a highlight, so don't worry if it just looks a little bizarre that it's just kind of staring at you. Try to keep it as uh, as round as you can. And now, because the iris is dry, we can work on the outside of the iris a little bit, and um, let's see, you can see my palette there. We can work on some of the. Uh, the threadiness that you can see that just the texture of the eye. So I've got the Prussian, I've got some cerulean, and I'm going to grab some yellow ochre. And I am going to go in with the uh, Prussian blue. Feel free to turn your work if you need to. And I'm just kind of getting these like um, this little uh, line kind of going in towards the center of the eye. You can have it a little bit darker at the top because the eyelashes are going to cast a shadow. So you can throw in both shades of blue. Yellow ochre. 
It's okay if they blend here and there. And you actually even have some flecks of um, burnt sienna. It's kind of like a like these little hazel flecks in there. It gives it a nice dimension. Your eyes aren't just one color. There's all kinds of flecks of other colors in them or different shades of the same color. We will be blending the edges of the iris into the eyeball because you do not have a hard edge between your iris and the whites of your eyes. So we will want to um, adjust that. I'm going to grab some crimson because we need to make the membrane around the eyeball a little bit darker, a little bit redder. So we're going to go in like that. A little bit over here. And I am going to rinse my brush and pull some of that out. Little veins and just the reflected color. I don't like to paint the little veins in. I mean, you could, but I think uh, you have to have such a fine touch and such a control of your color that um, it can look kind of creepy and horror movie-ish. Now I'm just gently uh, kicking up the paint at the edge of the eye, just like a gentle little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And that is giving me the soft um, transition between the iris and the eyeball. And then I'm bringing, picking up some of that color and bringing it over here because I feel like my whites are too white. I think I'll pull in a little bit of that, uh, that other color and add some, that kind of just grayish mud on my palette and add some of that in there too. It's very, it's subtle. I think that's a, that's a tricky thing is subtlety. Now, um, a lot of times you're going to notice a lot of different shadows around the the eye. So I'm going to grab some of this more cerulean tone here and really water it down. Add some of that into the over the eye area. A little bit under here too. And a little bit up here. We also have a little more pink in the crease. A lot of times where you have skin folding over, it's going to be a little bit warmer in color. So I'm grabbing a little of the crimson, a little of the burnt sienna to get those rosy tones. And that's going to go in there. I'm going to taper it off a little bit. A little bit under there too. And I mean, if you're doing like a, a portrait, and I mean, this eye is pretty much life size. If you're doing a portrait with a smaller eye, you're not going to need to put every little detail in there. So, so don't fret about that so much. A little bit of yellow in the uh, rim of the eye, a little more of that. Okay. I feel like I want a little more yellow ochre around the rim of the iris. I'm just going to kind of tap it in because it is that is a more opaque color, so I can kind of just tap it on. And now I want to lift the highlight out of the eyeball. And for that, I like to use a little scrubber brush. This is my favorite one. Um, I think I think they still make it. It's by Lowell Cornell, and it's called Maxine's Mop. It's a it's 27C Maxine's Mop quarter inch. I really like it because it's just, um, it's really great if I like wanted to blend a couple of colors together or if I just want to lift out a highlight. And what I'm going to do is lift out this pretty bold highlight here. It's not going to be completely white. It's, I just want to kind of tone down the color. And I feel like the older this brush gets, the better it works. And I can lift it down to the white of the paper if I want to. I might have a little bit of a higher highlight that's that bright. But all of a sudden, it starts to make it look a little bit more like an eye because you get that glossy look. 
and I want one little streak that's white of the paper. Um, and then just kind of soften up the edges. If you got a little, um, got too much paint into the whites of the eye, you can go ahead and soften it up. And if you took too much out, we can go and paint a little bit more back. So now let's work on eyelashes. We're going to go back to we're going to go to our number two. Um, you need a mix that is um, about the consistency of milk, like whole milk. And I'm going to turn this because I need to kind of approach it from a comfortable angle. So when you're looking at, I like to start kind of in the middle of the eye, and kind of in the middle, your eyelashes are kind of going straight up. And then they, as you get towards the outside of the eye, they're going to curve more. Because we, this is a round thing. I, And again, it's one of those things where I want to have my brush straight up like that, but I don't want to be in your way. So I think I might just kind of hold it in my, I typically would not paint like this. This is not like comfortable or ergonomic, so I don't suggest you do it. But I'm just trying to uh, be able to hold my brush at the right angle to my paper so that you can kind of see how... Uh, how to uh, approach it. So you do have a little bit of a curl to it, but as you get to the middle of the, the eye, your bristle, your eyelash is going up, and then you're going to find that they start actually going the other way. Look in the mirror. You know, if you don't believe me, look in the mirror. Look real close at your eyes. Look real close at your eyelashes. And try to get that little curve on the bottom. Same deal. I like to do the top one first because you usually have more lashes on the top, so it's a little bit, uh, a little bit less intimidating. But on the bottom, the same thing. I just, I personally like to start in the middle. I find it a little bit easier. Just go real light on those, uh, on those bottom lashes because it's really easy to get kind of like a. Uh, fake look to them if you're not careful. It's almost a, not a bad idea just to kind of spray a little bit of water on your palette instead of dipping your brush in the um, in your bucket because it's sometimes easy to get a little too much water on there and it can make it difficult to get uh, those detailed really fine lines if you have too much water on your brush. Use the biggest brush you can handle. If this is like, if this brush is just too... Um, Big for you, go ahead and use a smaller one. You'll just have to reload more often. That's why I like to use the uh, use a uh, a larger brush just so I don't have to reload so often. And you'll have some lashes that, that stick out longer. You'll have some lashes that are shorter. You'll have these like strays that go in the wrong way that just kind of sticking out. It's like, why is that, you know, sticking out in some like crazy, crazy direction? That's totally fine. I'm just throwing in a few more. I hope my hand's not completely in the way there. But I always, I think it's kind of crazy how all of a sudden it starts to look realistic. It's like a hot mess, and then it's like, wow, that looks like an eyeball. You know, isn't that crazy? And you can build up slowly. You can take a break if you need to. I want to thank all my moderators that hopped in today. Um, because I haven't been able to keep my eye on the chat, but I will take your questions at the end of the broadcast. For those of you watching live, I know you're all busy. I do appreciate you taking time to, to come out here. Okay, oh, it's looking, looking better already. Okay, we need a little bit more going on in our eyebrows. So we're going to go ahead and grab a little more burnt sienna and add that to our mix. And we're going to work on some eyebrow here. This is a great thing to do in your sketchbook. I mean, honestly, hopefully, oh, my hand is right in your way. I'm going to see if I can do that thing where I angle it a little bit. Um, great thing to do in your sketchbook. You know, just doodle when you get a when you get a free minute. And there's and it's not your sketchbook's not precious. It's not that worry that oh, I'm going to mess up a whole painting. You know, play around with it in your sketchbook. Or on a scrap of leftover paper that you don't have any plans for. Or a paper you pick up off the floor because your cat's knocked it down and left a paw print on it. You're not using that for anything else. You might as well use it to paint some eyeballs. Okay. I think I want a little more color in the iris. So I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna go in my yellow ogre first because I feel like 
I kind of want just some more of those kind of thready yellow ochre bits. It was so hard for me not to grab a white gel pen after I was done my first eyeball because I was like, oh, I just want that really shiny shine on it. But I resisted and I'm glad I did because I think I would have uh, I think it would have made it look a little too cartoony. And I'm going with a fresh and blue, adding some of that in there. You can get more crisp as you go along. Just remember, it's not a real sharp line there between the iris and the whites of the eyes. I am going to add, I'm adding a little water to my brush and just kind of tapping off the excess. I do want to put a little bit more color back in here in the uh, cast highlight. So that's all I'm doing there. Super, super faint, okay? Same thing with a little yellow ochre there. Super, super faint. I just want to get that cast highlight a little bit more uh, realistic and a little bit more with that dark color just in that cast highlight area. Try not to uh, um, lift up any of the other pupil color while you're doing that. It can be a little tricky. Most of these colors, actually, the colors that we're using today are very liftable. The crimson would probably be the one most likely to stain, um, but we used it in such faint amounts that it shouldn't give us a problem. But that's nice because then you you have that workability that you can always go back in. So I've got a mix of the uh, burnt sienna, a little bit of crimson, and I'm just outlining that bottom lash line a little bit in towards the center because it's just looking a little um, undefined. A little bit more of that up there too. And I feel like I might want a little bit over here. I did go a little dark with my pencil line there, but uh, not, not a huge deal. And maybe a little more burnt sienna in my iris. Whoops, I don't think I picked up any paint there. Didn't have enough water in my brush for one thing. I wonder how many people are painting along. They're probably not chatting if they're painting along. I'm too busy. A little bit of that burnt sienna. Okay, something else that's kind of interesting is that the eyelashes are going to cast a shadow. I still feel like I want a couple darker lashes here. Uh, so... I'm just putting in a few. It would really kind of be lashes clumping together. I think I went a little light on my eyelashes when I began. Not a big deal, though, because you can always go darker. Nothing's permanent. All right, and we also want to have a, a reflection of the eyelashes on the eyeball. But the only place you're really going to see it is on the, um, is on the color part of the eye, on the iris. So what I'm doing is that same black color that we mixed, I'm going to add some more of the Prussian blue to it. So it's I'm almost going for like a midnight, um, a midnight blue color, just like kind of a navy color. And um, this is one of those things where it might kind of freak you out. You gotta trust it and you gotta know when to stop. And that's gonna be the most difficult part of this whole process, I think. So what I'm gonna do first is put in my lash line big high, uh, shadow, which is just kind of a line here, just going as far as the iris. And then your <laughs> this is weird your lashes, your reflection, then a curl back. Okay. And they're even going into that bright highlight, which I think is a little, a little tricky, a little um, disconcerting, I think. I think it's, it's kind of scary to put that in there. And you're not, I mean, you could water it down, I guess, quite a bit. If you wanted to put some of that shadow in the white of the eye, but you're really not going to see much. You have to go so, so super light if you want to do any on the uh, on the white of the eye, but you can just kind of pull in a little bit of gray there, but try, but don't overdo it. This is like 
subtle, subtle detail. Now look how fun and shiny that looks. Isn't that cool? Now, of course, if you have a different skin tone than, um, than white, you just ad adjust those colors. Um, you can get pretty dark with the uh, burnt sienna. You might want an ultramarine blue instead of cerulean blue. And then when you mix the burnt sienna with the, uh, with the ultramarine, you'll get a much darker color. Um, that will be a little bit, I think, easier to work with. And you might even want a, a, a cadmium red or a warmer red versus crimson for the undertones. But, um, you know, play with that. If you, if I, I, th I think women have a little bit of an advantage in this department mixing skin tones because we're so used to putting on makeup and mixing it to bl blending it to fit our skin tone. So I think we have a little bit of an advantage there. But it's definitely something that everyone can learn. And there's no need of it being, you know, completely mystifying or tricky. I am going to um, thank everyone for joining us and I'm going to take a look at the chat. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat and I will spend, I don't know, uh, five or 10 minutes here answering any questions that come through. Let's see. And I want to thank Valerie, Grace, Ian, Dominic Designs, all of our moderators that are still hanging out with us here. Um, oh, okay. The upper shadow reflection was what I was waiting for. Love it. Thank you so much, BKBRP64. Uh, Eve Bolt, thanks for coming. Thanks, uh, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Taylor. Um, Taylor wonders, what's my opinion on Copic alternatives? I really think they're, I, I like the Blick Studio markers. I think they're as good as Copic. I am not a big name brand person. I think they all work about the same. I really think a brush tip gives you a huge advantage for blending. Um, let's see. Oh, thank you guys so much for coming and for leaving the lovely comments. I'm just finally getting a chance to peek at the chat. If you left a question earlier, um, I did not see it. So please go ahead and pop it back in there. Now, if you had trouble lifting your highlight back, don't don't feel bad if you want to go in with some white paint. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think you totally can do this without the white paint. I didn't, you know, this lifted up really well for me. But if you're in a sketchbook or working on some crazy paper and it doesn't work, go ahead and add white. All right, Kita asks, how are you finding the Windsor and Newton set? They're pretty cheap in Europe compared to America. Uh, well, this is the first, these are the first paintings I've done with this set. I really like it. I found the earth tones to be a little bit weak, but, um, but other than that, I'm really happy with them um that i got mine on a good deal they're usually very expensive so if you have a decent um a decent price go for it <laughs> ron is asking for some more acrylic painting i'm going to be doing some gouache painting which you can totally do in acrylics i just uh, like that i can lay out my paints and and leave them in my palette and not waste any so it just works a little better for me but um but any other gouache tutorials rhonda you can totally do in acrylics oh uh, thank you zz i appreciate the uh comment thank you claudia uh, oh, yeah, somebody's asking me to do a video on a face. Uh, okay, Manira, I do plan on doing that. I hope I pronounced your name right. Um, I do plan on that, definitely. Um, Jessica wonders, do I like watercolor pencils? I do. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, whenever, you know, sometimes I'm in the mood for that, and sometimes I'm in the mood for paint. Question, what's your favorite color in this palette? Let me take a peek. Gosh, I love that Prussian blue. Um, I like their olive green. This is my little bookmark laminated palette here. Um, I like their permanent rose. They're, there's really nice colors. I'm not as crazy about the earth tones, but they work really good for skin here. Uh, yes, Grace, I plan on doing more people videos. Um, Amina wants to know, can you use any kind of paper? I really think you could probably use most like uh, well-sized sketching paper or watercolor paper. This is cheap 80 pound watercolor paper. Um, it, I think you'll be fine. This is just a practice sketch. You should be fine. Um, would you put makeup over the painting? Would you put makeup over the, oh, well, you could, Ian, yeah, if you wanted to, you could definitely glaze on some eyeshadow color. Do it before you put the eye, the eyelashes on, though, because you can uh, kind of muck that up pretty easily. Thank you, Jessica. I appreciate it. Yes, I'm making some more drawing tutorials, Maria. Thank you for asking. I am planning on doing some uh, portrait drawing tutorials. And uh, Blue wants to know, what's my favorite thing to paint? I really like to paint flowers, probably the most. 
All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to sign off. If you think of any other questions that I didn't get to answer, go ahead and pop them in the comments, and um, I will get back to you then. And um, thanks so much for joining me on this impromptu live stream. I really appreciate it. Till next time, happy crafting.